Hello guys, Lynn Bros is back. Well, it really, it's just less Lynn here. Brody Lynn is not here today. This is a video, or more of a review, on these two model ships I've built. One, the one on the left is Lindbergh's Nantucket light ship, and the one on the right is Lindbergh's Southern Bell paddle steamer. The camera's going crazy right now. But basically, what I want to tell you is what my thoughts are on the quality of the models and my experience in building them. The first, well, the first one I built was Southern Bell, and that was in December. It was a nice ship. I liked enjoy. I liked building it. It was fun to build the paddle wheel on the the paddle wheel on it. The paddle wheel on the on the ship turns. I could demonstrate if I wasn't holding a phone. But the paddle wheel turns. The rudder turns because it's originally meant to be motorized. But this one doesn't have a motorized because it's a remake of the original model. Anyways, I used new paints on here that I haven't used before, and those are Vallejo model color. I very much do enjoy them. They're much better than testers. Enamel paints, but the thing I like about testers, enamel paints is they're waterproof. The camera is continually going crazy. Uh, <clears throat> but the glue that I used on this was Tamiya's Extra Thin uh, quick setting glue. And that stuff is absolutely horrible. I can't get anything to... I can't get anything to bond to anything using it. It's terrible. Anyways, the railing on this ship was easy to build because it had little studs that you could put in and was frankly quite... It wasn't difficult like the Nantucket, where the railing, you just glue it on there. There's no guide pins or anything. And with this glue, they constantly, constantly fall off. Uh, I did slight rigging on this one. Around the bow and on the smokestacks. To yeah, infant size it, I managed to get the front window open. The, the glass that they use in this, well, really, it's clear plastic, but they call it glass. It's nice. The good thing about this glue is that when it sticks to glass, or the plastic, clear plastic, is it doesn't leave residue behind that you would if you used testers, plastic, glue. But anyways, I prefer that because it actually bonds things together. The boat in general is about a foot long from bow to paddle wheel, or paddle wheel. Yeah, maybe about five inches high from smokestack to rudder. And pretty much this is an overall... I really like this model. It was a really nice model. And the beam... The beam is about three, four inches. I like... It's got really good focus. It's got really good deck detail. You probably can't see it very well. It's got nice side deal. The hull even has some detail if it'll pop up. I don't think it will. But anywho, this was a nice boat. Moving on to the light ship. That's if I can get this one to move out of my way. We have the Nantucket sitting here on my knife box because they had the glue on the rudder the other day. Or this morning, really. Overall, putting these together was not hard. These, the little rooms were easy to build. The, basically all the accessories, just getting them to mount to the deck was difficult. Putting the hull, getting the hull to fuse together was difficult using that Tamiya glue over there. Which sucks. Uh, I really like the red I used and the... The white letters on the red background. It looks pinkish on here, and that's probably because of the light, but anyways. Over here, the railing. The railing was beat the crap out of in the box. So I just made it work. I just said that the railing has been rusted. 
I did some nice, I, anyway, think I did some nice weathering along the structure, along the superstructures. I managed to get some of these water pools right there and there, if I can get it right there. Overall, this was warped the crap out of, oh, same on this. The deck on here was warped, but I managed to get the fit. Lindbergh has a problem with large parts, anyways, being warped. I managed to tank the anchors from a ship that I had salvaged, and I managed to make quite long anchor chains for both of them, the spare and the main anchor. I got the propeller to turn on here nice, because I made a wire that went through it and connected to a piece of plastic on the back. The rudder turns, it might stay on, I don't know. I'm not quite done with it yet though. I need to ballast it. Ball hole needs ballast, and hold on a minute. I am going to show you its best feature. Let me pop the deck off here. Here, let me put this down really quick. I'll have you look at the ship from up here. Never mind. Enjoy a view of carpet. I'll get this deck off, if I ever could. I'll go down on the deck. Flip a little switchy switch. And bam. Get back on. And bam, it is now lit. <laughs> lit. You might be wondering now. Hold on, let me turn off the lights here so it looks better in the dark. It looks like a ship out in the distance, and you might be wondering how I don't get the lights to bleed through the plastic. It is simple. Some people use tin foil under it in the inside. I honestly prefer... I just painted it matte black. You got, you do have some light flood through on the bow. I just realized that, but that's all right. Lights in the bottom portholes in the superstructures. I got the nav lights. I was going to put lights on these top. Uh, the light, the lighthouse part, because it's a light ship. But I didn't, because I couldn't get the wire to get up there, and the battery could not handle that charge. I painted the back of the diodes and the top of the diodes so the light, so the nav light, the starboard and port lights are pointing out this way. Pointing out to the sides rather than out down and all around. Anyways, I like how the light comes in through the door.